Good evening everybody and uh, tonight I'm going to have a go at project Euler problem number 92 which is called square digit chains. This is probably the last one I'm going to do that faffs about with digits uh, because uh, <laughs> frankly I'm getting slightly bored with uh, mapping things over show and uh, I can't think of a cheaper way to do it that I can be bothered to write out mathematically. Um, there are obviously cheaper ways. So tonight we're going to look at um, determining how many of these square number chains end in the value 89, starting from numbers below 10 million. Um, <clears throat> useful things to pick up when you're uh, watching Project Euler um, problems and trying to solve them is uh, to look for boundary conditions. So in this instance, it's worth noting that it says how many starting numbers below 10 million. So we can assume that one is in there, uh, but that 10 million is not. And that might be relevant if 10 million ends in an 89. I don't know if it does. We might check that in a bit just to be sure. So first thing that we're going to need to do is be able to construct these chains in order to stand a chance of counting them. Um, strikes me that let's make ourselves a file and let's start by getting the list of digits for a number. So digits is going to take an int and it's going to return a list of ints. And this will rather conveniently be something along the lines of map from enum do 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 dotted with show Let's get that loaded into uh, REPL and try it. So one of the test cases we've got is 145 goes to 42. Right, well those aren't the useful digits, are they? Those are ASCII uh, character numbers. So we need to go a little bit further. We need to um, not just have from enum, but we're going to dot something with it. And what are we going to dot with the from enum? it's going to be something like minus and then from enum of zero. See if that works. Reload. Negative. Um, okay, that's because the minus is the wrong way round. I could negate the whole thing or I can introduce another fantastic little function which is called flip which inverts the first two arguments of a function so that's going to flip minus around so instead of being a minus b it's b minus a and if i reload that i have one four five excellent uh square do we have a square function no we've only got a square root function so let's have a little square function um can't be bothered to write it out any cleverer than that let's just check that couldn't match type int with int. I missed a capital letter. Okay, and the square of four is 16. So that's working. So we ought to be able to map square over digits of 145. And we get 1, 16, and 25. And if we sum those, we get 42, which is 145 goes to 42. This looks looking good. Okay, how about we therefore define the uh, step which is going to take us from one number to the next number and step will be the sum of mapping square over doing digits reload step 145 is 42 we're doing pretty well here we have something that can move us a step along our chain so we can go from 145 to 42, presumably to 20, yes, and thence to 4, and thence to 16, and to 37, and so on. So we can do that. So now we want to know what number a chain terminates on. It's either going to be 1 or 89 according to this. So uh, let's assume that they're correct and write terminator of int to int 
And terminator of n is going to be something uh, where n tick is step n. And let's define the something. Um, if n tick is equal to 1, then the terminator is 1. If n tick is equal to 89, then the terminator is 89. Otherwise, it's going to be the terminator of n tick. I think that's going to work. Why is that highlighted? Parse error on input. I don't want that equals sign. Reload. What's the terminator of 44? 1. And 85, which is our other example. 89. And 145. 89. Also 149 is apparently stopped at 89. OK. So we've, uh, we've got something that gives us our terminator. So let's start thinking about mapping terminator over... Let's just go for the first 100 numbers first. Uh, actually, while we're here, let's have a look at the terminator of 10 million. It's a 1. So it wouldn't matter if we included it anyway, because it wouldn't affect what we're asked for, which is the number that arrive at 89. Always worth checking your boundary conditions. So if we map terminator over 1 to 100, oops, 1 point, 1 dot dot, there we go. So we're starting to see a pattern. We can filter that all is equal to 89. Oops. And we can calculate the length of that list. That tells us that 80 values below 100 terminate in 89. Um, nominally, we ought to be able to opt that to, do to, to 10 million straight away. So uh, let's uh, have a go. 1,000 million, 10 million. Uh, look away now, I suppose. Um, <laughs> my computer is grinding. Uh, I can hear the fan going. It's getting a bit warmer. I don't like how long this is taking. And this is a, a pretty dirty solution. Um, I don't like how long this is taking at all. Let's just see how long a thousand would take. That's pretty instant. Ten thousand? That took a perceptible amount of time. A hundred thousand, this is one hundredth of the amount of time that we will need to do ten million, given that this is essentially a linear operation. About two seconds. That means it's going to take about two hundred seconds to produce the ten million res result. And while I could run that now, one of my personal goals is that none of my Project Euler solutions should take longer than 30 seconds to run. And uh, uh, I'm a factor of 10 out, effectively. So we need to find a more efficient way to do this. Um, if I was writing this in a, an imperative language, I'd probably start sticking um, a, a table in that I could map numbers to what they terminated on, so that if I ever encountered that number again, I could reuse that information. However, because we're in Haskell, we don't have global variables, but we do have something really handy, which is called the state monad. Uh, don't worry if you're not comfortable with monads. I'm going to give you a really, really lightweight introduction here, uh, and we're going to do a state and see if that lets us go faster. So you get the state monad from control.monad.state and it's a nice enough little module that I don't think we need to qualify its imports and we're going to need to have a state which is going to have to map numbers to what they terminate on and it strikes me therefore that we should use an int map for this where, because the keys are all ints. Um, uh, someone berated me for not using int map before so let's do that. However maps and lists and so on have so many function names which conflict with the prelude that we're going to do a qualified import of data.int map as m. Okay, that terminator function isn't good enough for us. What we want is uh, 
terminator function which takes an integer and gives us back something in the state monad which has an int map to int and gives us back an int which is the terminator so terminator of n now all of a sudden we're in monadic code so we get to use do state provides us with three main functions when we're inside the monad and they're called get put and modify uh, we want to know if the number we've been given is one that we already know the answer to we're just going to return that otherwise we're going to go again so let's get our map and uh, if m dot member n in m then return uh, map pling n pling is the lookup function for maps else do new terminator comes from step n uh, modify with m dot insert of n and t so what that's going to do is that's going to get the new context we can't reuse m here because the call to terminator here might have modified it so we just use it again by using modify which is effectively get perform that transformation put and then we're going to return t which is this new terminator that we've got seems plausible what's emacs warning me about oh i don't have int map i need m dot int map and there we go so we have something that's going to do our terminator but we don't have anything talking about 1 and 89 so we can't actually terminate with this um, so let's wrap that a little bit more so same signature if n is equal to 1 or n is equal to 89 then return n else terminate a tick of n so we've now got a pair of mutually recursive functions so terminator will call terminator tick and terminator tick will call terminator which will step so at each point we're going to uh, cope let's work through that programmatically in our heads starting with 44 so we're going to ask for the terminator of 44 that's not 1 or 89 so we're going to return terminator tick of 44 which is going to get from our state uh, let's assume it's not a member yet because it's the first question we've asked so we go with what's the terminator of stepping 44 stepping 44 according to this is 32 so we go in here 32 is not 1 or 89 so we come into the top function again we get there's still nothing in the context so we step again which is going to give us 13 we go through the loops again down to here back up to here we get it's empty we come to here we step from 13 we get 10 we yeah, that's uh we we come to here we've got 10 it's not 1 it's not 89 we come back up we get it's empty we step again that's a 1 we come to here it's 1 so we're going to return 1 at this point which comes out in this t which we insert so we say that 10 terminates on 1 we return 1 which comes back to here which we modify and we say 13 terminates on 1 and we return it and we come back again and so on until we go round and round and round and round until we come out of terminator saying that 44 terminates on 1. In the process of doing that we've annotated the state with the fact that 44, 32, 13 and 10 all terminate on 1. This is valuable because it means that when we encounter any of those things we already know the answer. So if we're going through linearly then we're going to find out that 10 terminates at 1. We're then going to find out that 13 steps to 10 and therefore know immediately that it terminates at 1. That 32 steps to 13 and therefore immediately it terminates at 1. 
that 44 steps to 32, and so on. Um, and while this doesn't sound massively useful, uh, it ought to speed us up dramatically, really. Let's have a go and make sure it still works. Uh, reload. Well, hey, it's the joy of not having any red underlines in my code. Um, now, we want to be able to run the state. No, we don't. We want to eval the state. Eval state is a function that takes a state, a stateful operation, and an initial state, and it runs that stateful operation, and it gives you back the value that's returned. So let's run terminator of 44. Oopsie, I don't want the dollar. Terminator of 44 with initial state of empty. One. That seems right, doesn't it? Um, if we run state, then we're going to get the not only the return value, but also the entire state that uh, went into it. There we go. So we can see the one that returned and the fact that we have 10 maps to one, 13 maps to one, 32 maps to one, and 44 maps to one. So that's the help that we're going to get. We need to extend our terminator function to be able to operate over a list. So let's call that terminators, and it's going to take a list of int, and it's going to produce a state in int map of int of a list of int. Terminators of ends is, uh, now we don't need that. We can do this pointless style. We need to monadically map. That's what the capital M at the end of map M is all about. Terminator. And what map M does is it takes a list of things, it applies the monadic action to all of those things, so it applies the function that you've given it to all of those things, and then it sort of pulls a thread of the um, of the monad all the way through in sequence, and sort of pulls the state, pu pulls the monad just outside the list. So we go from a list of state int map ints to a state int map list of ints. Uh, and hopefully, therefore, that should do the trick for us. So let's reload and let's try eval state of terminators. And let's just give it the input set that we had before, which if I pop back to there was 44 and 85. Of Again, we have an empty input state to begin with. 1 and 89, which is exactly correct. The 44 terminates at 1 the 85 terminates at 89. Now, if we actually get the whole state out at this point, you'll notice that it's not actually any bigger, really. We've just gained this 85 maps to 89. And the reason for that is that there was no point in following this big chain here to get back to 89. However, if we insert 145 into our input set, then we get back not only 189.89 here, but also all of these intermediate values in this set that show us what uh, what we needed. Uh, and that's, that's hopefully where we're going to get our speed boost. So we did calculate before that 100,000, the termination point was 85,623. So let's try eval state of terminators from 1 to 100 thousand um, from m dot empty that's going to give us a list we can filter that on is equal to 89 and we can length that can we not no because I've missed a dot out again 85623 which matches up with what we did before and that felt a lot quicker but still not fast enough Still not fast enough. Let me try upping from 100,000 to a million. Two, three. No, I, ooh, we got an answer, but that's that was more than three seconds, clearly, which means it's not going to meet my 30 second rule. But we're running this in GHCI, which is a REPL. What about if we actually compile it? 
So let's write ourselves a main function. And main is just going to print out that value. Now that's the 1 million, which was the 856929. So let's try that if we use ghc 0 2 make of problem 92. And we run it. Oops. That was a lot faster. In fact, that was less than three seconds. So I think this is a goer now. I'm going to put an extra zero in here. I'm going to recompile it. And I'm going to say, look away now. It's still calculating. Oh, but I have an answer, and that was less than 30 seconds. So hopefully you lot can't see that answer. I'm now going to go and plug it into Project Euler and type in the confirmation code. Hey, we got it right. So uh, there you go, a solution to problem 92 of Project Euler, which also gave me an opportunity to introduce a little bit of the state monad and just for one of my viewers, uh, use an int map as well because they're fun. Again, there's probably an easier way to do this. There's almost certainly a nicer way to do this, but I hope that uh, you at least manage to follow along with my thought processes. Goodbye.